So this is the latest book. Uh, it's called The Rejected Stone. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, before doing this, I looked on my Amazon page to count. Uh, I remember some years ago listening to a radio host talk about he had written 20 books. And I thought, wow, that's, I didn't know anybody could write that many books. Um, well, this is my number 18, so I guess it can happen. Uh, a lot of the books I've written deal with subjects that mm, may be a little bit hard to grasp. I don't know. Uh, I know they cause me to think, so uh, they're, they're not necessarily easy. Uh, not to say this one is, but I, my, my objective was, as we wrote it, to um, just be straightforward and plain. Hopefully uh, that it would be something that's understandable. Um, now, if I'm trying to sell books or get you to buy, I don't know if that's the way to go about it because it may put a little negative connotation to it. But The Rejected Stone is about... Uh, the foundation uh, of the church and how that Jesus taught that that foundational stone would have the capability or the tendency to be rejected by many people. Uh, and I like the way that Peter talks about it. Uh, the stone that the builders rejected um, uh, to some uh is not appreciated, is not accepted, uh, but to some, it's a precious stone. And I write this from the standpoint of it being precious to me. I wish uh, that uh, everybody had that same uh, feeling toward it. Um, but the natural man tends to reject the things of God. It's a stated fact in the scripture. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity uh, with God. The spirit of the enemy is between our, our mind and, and God's mind. His ways are higher than ours and his thoughts than our thoughts. So it's not unusual for uh, us to be crossways when it comes to the thinking of God. And such it is with the very foundation of the church. Uh, we begin by looking at uh, the last part of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7. And uh, there he ends with the parable of the wise and the foolish builders and the choice of what foundation each of those would use to build their spiritual houses. And to one he called a wise man. And the reason he was wise is because he built his house, of course, upon the rock. And the foolish instead built his house upon the sand. I've always, or not always, for a long time, I've noticed that uh, both builders could have built a very nice house. Uh, they both could have looked nice, uh, had uh, great architecture, you know, whatever. But it doesn't matter how good it looks or how well it even functions. If it's not built on the proper foundation in due time, there will come a destructive force against it. And, uh, and so we start with that. And uh, the few words that were spoken before that parable are really quite sobering. And won't get into that right now or until the whole book and that... Uh, would uh, not be what my intention is here. Uh, but I, I noticed something when it comes to what people believe and how they assimilate their beliefs. And uh, one, one of the major things is that the first thing that you learn or the first thing that you hear tends to set the narrative for your belief system. Uh, you may notice that in, in news um, cycles, uh, sometimes narratives are put forth that I, I suppose people think 
that that actually set the narrative are, know they're not completely true, but they know the importance of bringing the first narrative or that first story to the people that hear because that's the one that's going to be remembered first and it has the best chance of sticking. Uh, the, the problem with that is that there's no truth or if the truth is not fully developed in those first to be heard narratives, we get stuck with a tradition that's not fully accurate and uh, that was the case apparently uh, during the course of the events that Jesus talks about as he concludes the seventh chapter of Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount. Um, we find out that he said, not all that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then he talked about some of the things that they would believe and, and they did believe in the name of Jesus. They believed in signs and wonders because they performed them according to this teaching of Jesus. But he said, um, uh, uh, when they came expecting to be uh, allowed entrance into the kingdom, he had to reject them. And that's a sobering thing. And, and that's why I said uh, I, the book is written because too often we take a, 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 a narrative that is not fully accurate or maybe uh, is, is not biblical at all. And we apply that to our own uh, understanding of the salvation message of the gospel message. So what we've tried to do is take it, be very careful to establish um, the truth in, in a way that's understandable. And I'll, uh, I'll kind of conclude this with just stating that who you hear the message from it has a great, a great influence on um uh, the effect of that message. And that's why he talked about wolves and sheep's clothing. And, he, and the scripture talks about false uh, teachers and false prophets. And, and then, of course, true teachers, uh, true apostles and true prophets. Um, if you hear someone tell you the truth, and that's the first that you get your message, then that's going to be a great thing. But if that wasn't the case, uh, Jesus taught that, you know, there may be some undoing of things. You have to reverse some of your teaching and deconstruct it so you can go back and start from the beginning. And that's what we've done here with this foundational message, the, uh, the rejected stone. We'll talk about why it was rejected and how to know that what you believe is not uh, that uh doctrine that's not true but it's it, it's rejected by many people uh, this this truth is but the fact is um, it's a precious precious thing and I pray that if by chance you pick this book up and read it sometime you will have an appreciation for the truth that is able to as Jesus said set you free to save your soul for it's the gospel and uh, I'm not ashamed of that gospel in the book it's written. And uh, we just want to encourage you to maybe take a look at it and uh, uh, don't neglect, as Hebrews says, so great a salvation. Look into it and see, because God wants you to be with him in eternity. And he's paved the way for you. Follow him through it in Jesus' name. Amen.